Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Mahindra EPC Irrigation Limited Annual Audited Financial Results of FY22 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, Please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now have the conference over to Mr. Ashok Sharma, Managing Director. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to all of you for the seventh investor call for Mahindra EPC Irrigation Limited. On behalf of Mahindra EPC, I would like to sincerely thank each one of you for joining this call. So today I'll be sharing with you on the key developments in the micro irrigation industry, the company's performance, and a broad industry outlook for F23. Today I thought, let me first talk a little bit about Israel. Many of you know about the technology developed in Israel and micro irrigation technology which has come from that country. As you are aware that Israel has a very small land, land region, does not have natural resources, very less rainfall, and Israel has always overcome these challenges through innovation. And I'll talk about the innovation in the area of water management. In the early years of Israel's existence, the population grew rapidly. And as the tiny country struggled with a significant water shortage, Israel developed water initiatives all over the country. The Israel Water Authority launched a series of programs for children that taught them how to save water by simple means, building a whole new generation of water-conscious citizens. A country with over 60% desert and less than 20% naturally arable land mass. Today, India, Israel has become a world leader in water management and water cycling. Over 90% of Israel water is recycled and nearly 80% of drinking water consumed is either desalinated or recycled. So 90% is recycled and 80% drinking water is desalinated or recycled. And Israel has reduced the amount of water needed for irrigation by more than 30% using micro-irrigation largely, and also has increased its groundwater level for efficient management and maintenance of traditional water storage structures. By doing this, Israeli farmers have made the desert bloom with the pioneering use of irrigation innovative farm technology. So today, agriculture is thriving in Israel, and it successfully traveled the journey from a water scarce to a water abundant country. Now, Israel is an example for the world on how to move from a water scarce to water abundant country. Cut to India. In India, again, I've been repeating this, but I'll just repeat there will be some new users, new listeners today. Uh, the agri sector consumes the largest amount of water. Almost 80 to 90 percent of the water is used by agriculture. And micro irrigation becomes a very important driver for water conservation. And given the high focus on environment, social governance, it's very critical that companies like ours are contributing to the environment and conserving water. You also heard about uh, water futures being listed on exchange in US. Today, India is a water stressed economy and very fast we are going to become a water scarce economy. So what does it mean for the microwave industry? It means a lot because as time progresses, all the citizens, farmers, governments have to get more and more water conscious. And today, only 12 to 13 percent of the arable land is having micro irrigation facility available. And the overall area available for using micro irrigation is close to 70 million hectares. Out of that, only 10 million is covered under micro irrigation. So clearly, there are a lot of positives in terms of the need for micro irrigation and especially for a country like India, given its large arable land. 
the benefits of micro irrigation i will repeat again is that it increases the crop production for the farmer at 30% and also the labor cost come down due to lack of weeds in the farm which reduce the labor cost we all been hearing about various schemes uh, by the government to promote micro irrigation uh, various announcements in terms of more crop more crop per drop and clearly that is over the last decade and a half has driven this industry to this level now coming to my mahindra epc mahindra epc irrigation company we always focus towards supporting the farmers and helping them to be more prosperous and that is our vision of vision of our company that how do we contribute to farmers prosperity and also contribute to the nation's priority of doubling farmers income and protecting the environment and ensuring that our country remains water uh, positive and not water stressed or water scarce in terms of the whole strategy of the company i will just repeat the key points which i have been emphasizing on our previous calls we have always focused on delivering high quality products and giving services to the farmers which help them to install the pods properly and use the pods properly and how do we do it our strategy is very simple we focus on few very critical markets increase our market share year on year uh, the last 3 years we have been increasing our market share by approximately 0.5% every year and we are close to 6.5% market share now over the years to increase the margins we have shifted from low margin sprinklers to high margin drip products now the big challenge in the industry is managing working capital and that has been one area we have been very mindful of and we have tried to plan our growth based on the working capital cycles from the government as far as last 2 3 years are concerned uh, cautiously we have taken a call to move towards a more non subsidy business so that there is less dependence on subsidy and a major thrust has been given on reducing costs if you look at our numbers our f22 fixed cost are lower than our f20 fixed cost so the whole idea is to make the business model more lean so that we are able to manage our businesses profitably so this was the overall context now let me talk about very specific things which you would be very keen to know about how the industry is doing now and what is the future unfortunately the last 2 years uh, for the industry have not been very favorable and the industry has been degrowing year on year just to share some statistics which are based on the published data in f19 almost 11.5 lakh hectares were covered through micro irrigation in f19 there was a degrowth of 20% and for in f21 there was a degrowth of 20% and further a degrowth of 25% in f22 so in f22 we are estimating around 7 lakh hectares were micro irrigated so this data is still to be confirmed but this is our industry estimate and this is what we believe now one has to think why these two years have been so tough for the industry compared to the previous years where industry was going at an average 6 to 7% and in some years it was years it was flat but never have we seen this kind of degrowth in the industry so looking at these two years a bit closely what one can see is that in the last two years largely due to the impact of covid the state governments have given less focus in terms of allocating funds for micro irrigation and perhaps there was there was an urgent need to use for public health so there was one big challenge we saw and the second challenge we saw is the overall impact of climate change there have been unseasonal rains which have had adverse impact in certain markets and also there have been cases where uh, because of cyclones some good markets could not perform and the third reason which is again something which uh, is very peculiar for the last two years has been the increase in raw material cost i have been talking about this on the previous calls and the trend actually remains unabated and as a matter of fact in the year f22 the raw material which is our main raw material which is polymers the raw material cost has gone up by almost 30% over f21 which means 
an impact of almost 15% on the total material cost. So 15% increase in material cost is what the industry faced. Uh, Mahindra EPC could reduce the impact by certain innovative design improvements, by process improvements, efficiency improvements, and our impact was less than 15 by around 2 to 2.5%. But still, we had an adverse impact of material cost increase of almost 12 to 13%. The major reasons for this increase in raw material cost has been the overall supply and demand situation. We have seen that the demand for polymers had increased significantly for applications for medical and other areas. And also there have been uh, many instances of large companies either reducing production or going for large breaks. And other driver for this raw material cost has been the increase in crude oil. Prices. In the last one year, if you look at 1st April to this 1st April, the prices have gone more than 70%. The crude oil price increased by more than 70%, which has impacted the material cost. Obviously, this has put a lot of pressure on the industry in terms of reduced revenues, reduced margins, and also in certain markets, it has become unviable to sell the products profitably. So this is the challenge which we saw in the last two years in the industry. Clearly, based on this, a lot of efforts have been put by the industry association and players to raise the case with the government. And the government has been, uh, you know, giving suggestions that how can we have a pricing which is linked with the raw material dynamic pricing rather than having a fixed pricing which is currently available. How the schemes can be run more efficiently by doing DBTs to the farmers and ensuring the schemes are available all around the year. So based on this, uh, there have been some positive developments in terms of the government deciding to, central government allowing the state governments to increase the price in October that was announced. And as after that, the various state governments have started the process of price revision. And uh, up till now, Telangana government has already increased the price and uh, other governments state governments are in the process and we expect some more price increases coming from different state governments starting this quarter. Also what is favorable for the industry is that stable markets like Maharashtra, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu which have been consistently well performing have demonstrated their commitment to give adequate funds for this year and on the ground we see them working efficiently to ensure the business or the industry does not suffer. There are two other developments which we think are positive for the industry. One is the renewed and strong interest by the Telangana state government. Uh, they have declared oil palm cultivation as a big priority for the state government. And towards that, they have allocated a budget of around 500 crores towards micro irrigation. And they've been actively engaging with the industry to increase micro irrigation in Telangana. So that seems to be a good opportunity for the industry. And they've demonstrated that by increasing the price uh, and declaring the new price in ahead of other states. Another development which is worth noting is the development of AP government. Uh, you would be aware that for the last two years, the Andhra Pradesh government has been quite dormant in the micro irrigation industry. And recently, last few months we are seeing a renewed interest and demonstration of that has been sizable payments made by the AP government to the various companies for the amounts which have been due for quite some time and the balance has been also assured in this month and the department has been actively engaging with the industry to now restart the micro-regional business. So these seem to be on the positive side, uh, increase of prices by state government focus of stable states continues, dormant and large states like AP and Telangana getting reactivated. And we expect this should drive the industry well for the coming years. Having said this, there are challenges which continue. We are not seeing any relief on the raw material prices. They have been increasing in the last few months. And uh, we expect that they may remain on the similar levels or marginally increase in the next few months. 
and uh, perhaps as the geopolitical situation uncertainty reduces across the globe and also we are expecting some new capacities to come in and also there has been expectation that the port congestions are creating a lot of issues in terms of movement of goods so as they ease during the next few months we would we could perhaps expect some uh, stabilization oblique softening of raw material prices but today it's very difficult to take that view uh, today we are not seeing in the immediate future any scope of relaxation on raw material prices so this is the context which i wanted to share with all of you so that in this context you are able to see the financial performance of quarter 4 and for the full year of you have already gone through the results i'm sure so i will just share the highlights uh, in quarter 4 mandra irrigation epc irrigation limited registered revenue of 66.7 crores in f22 quarter 4 versus 72.5 and we had a minor loss before taxes of 0.545 crores versus the profit of 5.59 in the last quarter and as you would have seen from the financials the material cost has increased to 63.7% versus 55.7% in the last quarter so there has been a significant increase of almost 8% on the material cost which actually has impacted our bottom line on a new level uh, we have had a degrowth Uh, our revenue was 212 crores compared to 57 of last year, and uh, we have a loss of 10 crores versus a profit of 25 crores in F21. And again, if you look at the material cost, it has moved from 51.7 to 62.8 percent, significant jump. And we did not see any major price increases from the government last year, and clearly this increase of 11 percent has impacted our bottom line significantly. now i talked about f22 i talked about the challenges i talked about the efforts put by the industry some actions by state governments but when i look at internally how this year has gone for mahindra epc i think many good things have happened in terms of what we could do internally and i'll talk about that one by one that once we realize that last two years the raw material costs as they're going up and the revenues may be under pressure because of state government funding a lot of efforts have been put to move towards a business model which is having less dependence on subsidy just to give some statistics in f20 our 1% of the revenue was coming from non subsidy business and last year our revenue was 15% from non from non subsidy business in the past we have been you know putting efforts to focus on states which are more stable with better payment cycles and last year we could achieve 33% of our revenue from these states states like maharashtra gujarat compared to 22% in f21 and uh, around 19% in f20 so from 22 to 33% revenue we could move to markets which are more stable and more uh, dependable in terms of payments moving to our uh, joint venture mahindra top greenhouse my there's been some good development there we have been able to sign mou for providing net houses for rural livelihood increase for small farmers we have signed up with ap government and uh, there are the good pipeline of orders for the year which we expect we'll be able to fulfill during the coming time another benefit if i were to look from uh, for class 2 years is our focus on cost we could put a lot of uh, additional focus and we could manage to keep our fixed cost lower than f20 level despite the inflation and that has been possible due to various innovative ideas in terms of reducing uh, the waste in the system and improving productivity and able to manage the cost strongly even the variable costs have been contained in f22 by a lot of optimization of the mix despite increased freight cost and other variable elements so in a rather challenging environment uh, with the few opportunities opening up for the company we believe that our efforts to perform better than the industry will continue and we would be focusing on 
our strategy of key market focus, improving our mix, working in profitable states, and increasing our non-subsidy revenue. And so that we are having faster payment cycles for those businesses and keep our you know, eyes on cost the way we have been doing. And with this, we are quite uh, hopeful that going forward, our performance will continue to be better than the industry. And our farmers who have always trusted Mind IPC for its quality and for its good service, that promise will continue. So with this, I end my opening speech in a manner of speaking. And I would now be very happy to hear your suggestions, questions, and comments. So over to you for the Q&A session. Uh, so should we open up for questions? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is on the line of Ajas Lakhani from UNI Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Any questions? Sorry, Mr. Lakhani. So we are not able to hear you clearly. Can you use the handset mode while speaking? Yes. Thank you. Is this better? Much, Much better, Lakhani. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so thanks uh, for the opening uh, remarks. Uh, want to check with you is that could you speak a little bit about the receivable uh, position and you know we have uh, on 40, 50 crores. Uh, if I understand, if I remember correctly, 40 crores is a pending uh, receivable from the AP government. So could you speak a little bit on that situation? Okay. Any other question, Rakhani? Uh, I I I'll, I'll follow it up with uh, another one. That's all. So go ahead, you tell me that I can answer together. This is a simple one. Anything else if you want to ask you. Uh, yeah, so sir, uh, also going ahead now, sir, uh, you know, the pain that you've seen with AP government, uh, if you could just highlight that the better uh, governed uh, states, what kind of a receivable do you have from them? Uh, and what kind of ability do you have to further increase uh, sales in those regions versus, uh, you know, where you've been currently selling? Because I, I presume you are... Predominantly selling just six to seven states, right? Or actually five, five to six states, if I understand. Mm -hmm. So that also. Sure, sure, sure. No, very nice. I think, uh, Lakhani, thanks for you know putting this question because this is clearly the one of the most important uh, drivers in this industry. Right. So as far as the AP is concerned, yes, the whole industry, as I mentioned on my opening comments, that two years there was hardly any payment. But recently, which is the last month, uh, in the month of April, uh, we received, see, we almost around 40 crores payment is due from the AP, and we received around 15 crores uh, last month. And also, a similar amount is expected in this month as per the government, but that we have to wait and see. But definitely 15 crores we have received. So that's a positive development as far as AP is concerned. And uh, what we are now getting a sense is that this government also has getting a lot of pressure from the various groups to focus on micro irrigation and they want to again you know rejuvenate the activity there. Now coming to the your next question. Actually, if you look at the industry, Lakhani, it's largely around these five, six states. If you look at the big ones, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Telangana, Karnataka. I mean, these would contribute almost 75, 80% of the entire industry. So everybody is in those markets. And in this market, uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat are the industry markets which tend to uh, pay on time. And you ask the question, how much time? So it varies from uh, you know, season to season. But just to give a broad idea, uh, an efficient state like Gujarat would end up you know, paying us between three months to six months, depending on the, which part of the year. And in Maharashtra, the scheme is you know, better where we don't have much receivable issues because the payment is directly made to the farmers. And that's the model we are actually recommending to the government with a direct benefit transfer. So our receivables are 
you know, very less in these markets. So that's the very good for us in terms of working capital management. Tamil Nadu is the third big market which has been, uh, you know, driving the industry. And that state is also, it's not very efficient on uh, payments and they have larger time frame for payment that could go beyond six months. But the, again, the silver lining with this is that, you know, we do get the money, it's sometimes delayed, but government should honor their commitment. And depending on their current situation, it goes off sometimes by a few months here and there. Now, the last question which you asked about uh, focusing on these markets, I had mentioned in my opening comments that from 22% revenue from the good markets, typically we consider Maharashtra Gujarat as the good markets from payment and profitability. We moved to 33%. So that's one positive sign. And uh, we have some very good plans to further strengthen our position in these markets. I hope that answers your question, Rakhani. Uh yeah, sir. Just a couple of follow-ups again on that. One is that what is the size of uh, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu in terms of uh, size, if you could just expand sure. that. And also, sir, you mentioned that Telangana has uh, already increased prices. So could you uh, quantify what is the increase in prices that Telangana has done? And mm -hmm. if you have any indicator of what the other states are likely to do? Okay. I think you ask questions on everybody's behalf, like all the key questions you have asked. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at Maharashtra and Gujarat, you know, these markets actually hover around 600 to 800 crores each, depending on the year. And uh, Tamil Nadu has been growing, you know, quite at a faster pace recently than the last three, four years. And that's also around in the range of 500 to 600 crores now. So these are the three markets which contribute to almost 2,000 crores plus minus 5, 10%. And again, it varies year to year depending on various factors. So that's point number one. Coming to Telangana, Telangana, the price increase they've offered is uh, actually in line with the increase in the input costs of last year. So almost 20% uh, uh, price increase they've given, uh, which of course, just take care of the increase of F22. So that's a positive sign. And uh, the question is, what will be the increase by other states? I have no idea. Uh, yes. It. If you have, have any no, indicators. I have, no I have no idea. But what I can tell you of experience, that uh, once a state like Telangana, Andhra, big state gives a large increase, it actually becomes some kind of benchmark for other states all to think. But frankly speaking, it's very difficult to say. So each state has their own uh, way of thinking. But uh, we are happy that at least Telangana has given a, you know, taken a right position to give a re reasonable increase to the industry so that the industry has an interest to promote migration in that state. Got it, sir. And sir, you had mentioned, uh, I think, uh, uh, last call that there are newer states of so UP, MP, uh, yes. Pakistan, Bihar, they were looking yes. to participate. So any green shoots there and just a follow up on APEC, we've had a terrible experience. So uh, is it that, you know, that once between twice shy kind of a philosophy where well, we will not be very aggressive in that state any longer or given that they're opening up their purse strings, we'll continue to sort of, uh, you know, focus again and, and hope for a better payment cycle from that government. No, so clearly I would agree with you on the second point. We need to be cautious in AP because, and as an industry, we have put a lot of conditions. I think uh, due to the AP situation, the industry came together and they put a very strong request to the AP government in terms of the payment cycle, etc. And we have certain norms internally where we manage our business based on the payment cycle. So once we see the payment cycle are favorable in any state, then we increase our uh, revenue or efforts or business in that state. So we want to monitor AP, how it goes. If it is paying well, then definitely we would like to participate. But if it is not meeting into our norms, then we'll calibrate our efforts there. So that's as far as AP is concerned. Now the other question uh, we discussed about, and I did mention about these states like UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, Orissa, Rajasthan, actually kind of you know showing some uh, promise. And uh, so on a lower base, they have not been so badly impacted compared to other large states. But overall, last year, the sentiment was rather low. And frankly, the call we took during last year, given the huge pressures on uh, revenue, is to go very 
conservative in terms of cost and not put too much cost up front so we have been i would say uh, very cautious in these new states and uh, given the overall environment of the industry but we are looking at them we have some good strategies as the industry moves ahead we will definitely take more aggressive position but the short answer is compared to what we thought for last year we have not been able to uh, we have not we have decided not to push so aggressively compared to what we had thought we will see if the environment is good we will then reprioritize on those states good so we can move to next question lakhani with your permission thank you the next question is from the line of aditya shah from vikram advisory services please go ahead sir i have uh, two three questions as well uh, one is related uh, regarding our market share currently uh, mm-hmm. second one is uh, the growth expected for the industry and for us uh, mm-hmm. since last two years were deep growth uh, third question is uh, um, the 8 9% revenue which came in h1 from the non government business uh, mm-hmm. what was that in h2 and for the full year mm-hmm. and uh, uh, what is the what is your plan to increase up to what percentage in the next year fi23 increase what increase the percentage of non government business okay 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 so okay. in fi23 non subsidy okay Thanks, Aditya. Thanks for you know coming for this call and asking these questions. Now, if you look at EPC, every year consistently, you know, we have been growing by 0.4, 0.5% on our market share most of the year. And if I look at the last three years, I was looking at data, uh, we have grown by average 0.4% year on year. Uh, today, our market share is between six and six and a half percent. Now, I must also caution that. Uh, these are estimates there is no reliable data available through independent sources this is based on our uh, estimates of other players at the all india level and at the state level so this percentage could be a little bit off in terms of absolute numbers but the trend has been a gradual increase in market share and the reason again is very important we our company has always focused on the customer product quality is perceived to be the best in the market our service and this business this product requires our service and handling to the new farmer who is buying the system for the first time so starting from the design of his equipment because each lot has to be customized the design has to be customized to that lot uh, proper installation has to be done and then the farmers have to be properly educated for using it well uh, coming to the third question about second question about growth it's a tough one because the industry is going through quite a uh, you know difficult patch last two years but when i look at the positives in terms of the, like i mentioned the dormant states wanting to get active uh, price increase which will make the industry also then you know drive the growth so but there is a dampener of the raw material cost which industry has to deal with in the short term so our estimate is that maybe half one there will be a Uh, maybe a single digit kind of a growth uh, 5 to 10% and maybe half to uh, depending on how the monsoons go and how the policies unfold if they are favorable then we can expect a better growth in h2 uh, and on the positive scenario if i have to say give a range for the year i think from 5 to 12% could be the annualized growth rate on depending on various factors Uh, this is our current estimate but of course next call we can update based on the new data available and as far as mahindra epc is concerned we don't give any specific forecast or you know our forward revenue projections but what we can share with all of you is that our attempt and effort is always to grow faster than the industry and which we have also demonstrated in the last few years that will be the case we will always ensure that uh, we put all the efforts all the strategy and uh, try to ensure uh, we are growing but the main industry that's answering your second question now when you say non government business actually we mean non subsidy business yes uh, non subsidy business is a segment i think two years ago i had mentioned on the call that looking at covid and other factors we want to now develop this portfolio 
Now there are three, four sub-segments in that. Uh, the first segment on that is a segment which is called thin wall drips. Now it, there are very thin uh, wall drips means very low mm, less mm drips are uh, made by the companies, and they are offered to farmers at a lower cost, and they have a lower life, but they are uh, they do the job as good as the regular drips, and they are available outside subsidy. So farmers can buy that. That is called uh, thin wall drips. That is one segment. Other segment which is there is a the segment of projects, which is government linked but not subsidy linked. And in these projects, government uh, you know issues tenders and notices, and companies are encouraged to work with the government. And we can choose to decide which uh, project to work in depending on the payment terms and uh, on the past interaction with those governments. So we select projects which are having good payment terms and uh, we execute that. That's another segment. Then the third segment is exports. Uh, then the fourth segment is non non subsidy business. So meaning there are farmers uh, who who already availed subsidy in the past. They're not eligible for new subsidy. So that segment also is growing because subsidy uh, because migration in states like Andhra, Maharashtra, Gujarat has been there for many years. So many new farmers are coming up, and we have a database of our old farmers. And since we are in this business for many years, so we are reaching out to them. And uh, those who are not eligible uh, for subsidy, we encourage them to go for non-subsidy product. Hmm. So this is on non-subsidy business. And last year we did around 15% non-subsidy business, as I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. This year uh, the thrust continues. And our target is to achieve around 20% uh, to non-subsidy. So that's where we are, Aditya. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, to follow up with that, uh, the pricing changes uh, that the Telangana government made. Mm -hmm. Let's say the other governments don't make any kind of price changes. Then, if we have we were to sell uh, the micro irrigation products to the farmers at these prices without the increase. Do we sell it at a loss or a very minor profit? So as you can see from the last quarter's financial, uh, there in front of you, uh, with the old prices, this is what the performance was. So at a top line of, as you can see, the top line of 66 crores, we almost broke even uh, with the current cost and pricing structure. So as the, I mean, if the cost gets favorable, pricing gets favorable, then obviously things are positive for us. If cost does not get favorable and price gets marginally favorable, then a little better scenario emerges. And let's say if cost gets adverse and price does not change, then we have a still worst case scenario coming. So these options are there and we have to see how the market unfolds. So I've explained before uh, what could be the upside and what could be the challenges. So but uh, from 2011 to 2015, just going a bit back, if I mm -hmm. look, uh, your raw material cost had been for the four years when like, you know, just when Mahindra acquired uh, EPC, mm -hmm. between 60 and 65%. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, even after that, the operating margin was uh, positive between 5 and 9%. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the change in the business model by paying higher sales commission is creating a big, uh, a bigger drag on uh, the net profits. Because uh, today with 63% uh, raw material cost, our uh, operating margin is negative 3% versus a positive 5-9% in 2011 to 14 or 15. Now, uh, sir, why is this change uh, done? And uh, can we, uh, you know, change it again to, you know, have these cost and uh, cost savings and efficiencies that, you know, we talk about? Uh, I think Aditya, the material cost which you're saying in that period was not so high. We can look at the data, let me check again. But as far as memory goes, it was not so high because this is uh, experiencing this high cost in the last two years. And we had one year in 17 or 18 when the cost was higher. So that is one. Now, the second point which I want to highlight is in the early days, our material cost was higher than 16, 17, 18. The reason was we were having much higher dependence on sprinkler business. Uh, in those days, we used to have almost 75 to 80% business of sprinklers, which has lower margins and higher material cost. 
and 25 percent we used to have on uh, drip business. So over the years we have moved away from sprinklers and more into drip, and as a result, our margins have increased significantly. Uh, another point we need to talk about is the in the early years, 11, 12, 13, 14. The pricing was on uh, largely the markets which were active were Maharashtra, Andhra, those days, and the uh, uh, commission system was payment system was different. We used to have less commissions for Maharashtra because of the nature of the model. When Tamil Nadu came in, our commissions started increasing more. So as a result, our commissions went up, but overall our margin remained the same. So overall the trend is much better in terms of uh, margins. But I don't mind, you know, I'll ask our team to connect with you later on and exactly share the discussion on 11 to 15 data. Or I'll just ask my team to give the data. If I get the data, I can, you know, come back to you on this point. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Rajan Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good afternoon. I am good, Rajan Bhai. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, sir, uh, first of all, thank you for the opening remarks. They were very informative. Uh, I had certain questions. One was this uh, last quarter, uh, 66 crore of top line, which we did. Does it include any price hikes or all the price hikes have happened post 31st March 2022? Okay. Next question. Uh, next question was, sir, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that in 2021, we saw a degrowth of 20%. And 21-22, we saw degrowth of 25%. That means there was a net drop of 40% in the industry in this two years. Right. right. Are we still looking at this 12% growth, sir? If there's a 40% drop, if we want to go back to that, uh, regain these two years of losses in the current year, and assuming that industry goes back to 1920 level, we are aren't we looking at a higher growth because 5 to 12% seems to be very very low, sir. Okay. And uh, uh, I would also like to know about, uh, uh, you mentioned in your opening remark that Telangana has given 20% rise in prices. Yeah. Uh, assuming that other states give 15% rise and net-net it is 15% across the country. And if the industry were to grow, go back to 1920 levels, are we looking at a revenue of beyond 300 crores for the current year? That was my question. And a little bit on the uh, top greenhouse gas, uh, top greenhouse uh, turnover expected, you know, because you said we had some good orders for the current year. Yeah. And, uh, sir, any new states you have entered? And uh, one more question. The last two years was very stressful for many companies. So is the industry seeing reduced players in this, uh, right now at this point of time because of the stress? For the last two years, many of the smaller players may have got wiped out. So uh, is it... Uh, the scenario such that smaller players are, you know, facing stress and maybe winding up their businesses or something like that. So if you can give some idea sure, on that. Sure, sure. Ajahn, thank you very much for asking the important questions. So starting with the first question. Now, uh, in the 66 crores, actually, uh, there's one price increase which has happened by the Gujarat state government, which happened early on. I think September, October, they announced this, which was around 5 to 6%. There is one increase which happened. The Telangana has happened uh, just after that uh, in this year. So, answer is only Gujarat and uh, Gujarat is on the price with 5 to 6 percent. The second point which you said is true that the industry has gone down to almost 40 percent in the last two years. And it's a matter of concern for the country. And it's a matter of very major issue which the PMO, state governments uh, are thinking and need to think hard. We met the uh, Secretary for Agriculture. The new secretary has come in. He was very concerned about this, and he did express that there has been a lot of uh, internal concern on the matter. And the government is absolutely not happy with this. Central government for sure, because it is not in line with the declaration which they had given across last four or five years, uh, budgets and other communication. So clearly, there is a need for the industry to grow back fast. But why we are taking this view, Rajan Bhai, is that we want to you know, be more cautious and conservative in our approach uh, because we have seen in the past that uh, while we expect that things sometimes don't fall in place for various reasons, and 
in state government working sometimes it's uh, internal bureaucracy sometimes election sometimes a new factor so we would rather prepare ourselves uh, in terms of the cost structure and expectation management with this kind of numbers if the industry is looking better obviously we are geared up because we have capacity we have presence in all the markets and we can really ramp up uh, our presence we have plants in coimbatore in baroda in nasik and we have a very good supply chain available so for us to achieve uh, you know stocks of uh, supply of 300 crores all that is not a problem so let's see how it goes as as of now this is what we think is a more uh, conservative and uh, more reasonable view but we'll see and as quarter one goes i think things will start emerging uh, i would love that industry grows and uh, it reaches the f20 levels and uh, we achieve record business obviously we'll be happy if that happens but uh, we'll have to wait and watch sir Uh, now coming to your next point about uh, 15% uh, standard price increase now if that happens and the governments are you know uh, having the proper funds and working well then clearly uh, it will be a you know turn around and we'll be having going back to the good times of 17 18 19 when the industry was doing well but we'll have to wait and watch and currently after last year we want one two quarters to see something on the ground before we really start you know hoping so we are still not seeing those signs to be honest once we have let's say in this may or june if two or three governments follow uh, in price increases like the way telangana has done then obviously we'll be in a better position to uh, communicate and uh, plan for it but one thing i can assure all of you that in terms of our readiness to grow faster than the industry even if the industry is very fast we are prepared because we have all the wherewithal we have a very strong brand strong manufacturing capability supply chain capability efficient uh, working capital management so all those systems and processes are in place so that's the positive for our company coming to top uh, greenhouse now top greenhouse uh, is now slowly coming of age but again it's a small business i don't want to you know uh, give a impression that that's going to Uh, go exponentially and really impact a big percentage of the total revenue today it contributes to hardly 4 to 5% of uh, 5 to 6% of epc revenue but yes the growth rate is going to be much higher and we want to grow that business much faster and the traction which we are getting from some segments is quite interesting and we hope to grow that business by 25 to 30% uh, in this year for sure and then let's see if we get good response could be even higher than that now regarding this competition of last two years yes your point is absolutely valid we have seen that lot of you know smaller regional players have kind of withdrawn or uh, uh, just slowed down reduced their whole capacity manpower lot of these companies have reduced their costs and many companies which are small to medium size actually have had lot of uh, you know financial issues in terms of uh, not getting payments from markets like andhra Uh, we are very very aggressive at some point of time and did not have proper rules for working capital they have really faced the pressure so to the extent it is uh, encouraging for players larger players like us and three four other companies who are well managed and uh, uh, capable of exploiting but having said that i must also hasten to add that in this industry if the industry goes up in the next one year or two years then the entry barriers are not much so it's very easy for these players to come back again because they are all opportunistic and uh, they could again come back to uh, again come back fast so it's not going to be sustainable for long new players can always keep coming in prajam i hope that answers your question i think we yes, are running a bit yeah but i have time. one question you said gujarat has done 5 to 6% hike so we can expect one more hike of another 10% or something like that right i mean we have made a we have made a pitch So we have made a pitch, and the Gujarat government has, the GRC has, uh, you know, been very open. They said yes, we understand, and they are working on it. And I think the state governments, the bureaucrats, uh, machinery, they understand because data is in front of them. They can make out the cost increase. They know everything. So that way, they are uh, quite positive. And let's see step by step how they react. But they have been open for sure. And industry has done a very active job. Our association has been really working very hard to explain to all the stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vijay Kumar, an individual shareholder. Please go ahead. 
Hi, good evening. Hi, Ilya. Hi. Uh, it's been a good performance uh, in spite of you know, a lot of macro issues uh, that are plaguing us. Uh, I think most of the questions are covered uh, by my colleagues or friends. You know, uh, I have one or two more. Uh, one is um, knowing this business more of government subsidy led, you know, 80, 90 percent. Uh, are we looking at, uh, you know, um, adjuvancies in, in, in agri, you know, be it uh, precision uh, agriculture or, or any other space like we have got into a green top or in any other thing that we are looking at to grow faster than, because there will always be challenges uh, in micro It looks very lucrative, but, but I know it's a very tough business to be in. Uh, so is there any opportunity uh, uh, as a group? Because I've heard that the CEO of Mahindra Group talking about uh, precision agriculture as a priority for the group. So will Mahindra EPC play a big role in that? Okay. That's my question. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, you? Uh, and some time back, uh, group was also talking about consolidation within uh, uh, Mahindra uh, agri uh, pockets. So anything in the near horizon or any, any I know it's a board level uh, at the MNM uh, 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 entity level, but, but anything that, you know, uh, uh, is possible uh, in the next uh, medium term to longer term at least. Okay. So Vijay, coming to your first question, uh, you're right. Uh, we need to uh, have lesser dependence on state government, and that is the path we have started. And as I mentioned, that from 1% we are at 15, and we want to further progress it. That's in the, with the current realm of products, which is I discussed in the past. Second thing which we are now working on is the greenhouse project. We expect a greenhouse project to you know, come of age in the next few years and start adding to the significant contribution of the company. So these two are already there in the realm, and you're aware of it. Now we are also studying some other areas where we can leverage our, uh, even in the last call, there was a you know, suggestion by one of the members on looking at manufacturing PVC and such other areas. So this we are evaluating and studying. Uh, there is no finalization now, but we are looking at that space and that could, so like that we are looking at some space which are beyond, but we are also mindful that we would like to be a strategic core. We don't want to dilute and we would like to keep the focus on the farmer and not get into too much of unrelated diversification. So that would, would be one of the criteria I would keep in mind. And coming to the question about precision farming. So precision agriculture, micro irrigation is precision agriculture, which is you know one of our important precision uh, farming methods. And there are other precision farming uh, methods which are being thought about, but they are not in Mahindra IPC. They are in the MNM space of tractor business. So they are being incubated and thought through. But clearly, we have synergies and we work together. So wherever precision irrigation required, uh, EPC would come into that system and they would contribute there. Uh, as far as you know, your next point about uh, consolidation and some future things, frankly, it's, we cannot comment. There is nothing available to discuss now. But as and when there is something, surely we will you know, obviously keep it updated. So currently, there is nothing to update on that. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. And uh, can you have the last question? Because it's almost close to five. So let's take the last question, if any. Uh, sure, sir. The last question is from the line of Aditya Shah from Vikram Advisory Services. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, sir, as a follow up, what is the sales data from uh, Samriddhi centers uh, owned by Mahindra? And what is the percentage of sales which are direct sales, so called, you, you may say? Um, another one, uh, the, the person before me asked was the consolidation within the group. So I believe from what uh, the public data I have is, uh, you know, there are Mahindra Agri, Mahindra Summit and all of those companies together probably have around 500, 600 crores of turnover. So uh, together, do uh, Mahindra at a group level plan to, you know, sort of have a larger entity like, you know, which can have 1,000 crores of turnover and which is why we can have better cash flows and uh, all of that? Yeah, so Aditya, uh, let me just first confirm your that point which you talked about material cost. Uh, my team has just yeah, responded. Yeah, 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 so what yeah. you have said, observation is right. And the answer which I give you also was right in terms of the commissions and in terms of the mix. And also, as we also, we like to remember that F1112 
when Mahindra acquired the company, we also had to make some investments in people and organization, IT, and other things. So that was the kind of journey we had then. So that, but your data is correct, so that's fine. Now coming to the question on uh, uh, synergy with uh, Samridhi. So roughly we do around 8 to 10% business through Samridhi centers. And uh, that happens through them. And it is done at arm's length. And we use the factor dealers, their reach, and their presence. So not only for the 8 to 10% business, but also we have a lot of joint efforts in the field in terms of promoting so joint farmer meetings, etc. So that the farmer sees uh, Mahindra as one. And that's a unique strength which we have. So that definitely is one of our important image and brand building uh, avenues also in addition to sales. And coming to your question on consolidation, yes, what you said, from it, I agree, all that is there. I think these are options which are always there for the management to review and consider. But as I said before to uh, Vijay, currently there is nothing on the cards which I have to update you on. But these are options, and like that, there are many other options that are there. So Thank when you. the time comes, obviously, we will keep you updated. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Good. Thanks a lot. So with this, can we end the call, ma'am? Uh, sure, sir. Would you like to add any closing remarks? Oh, I would just like to thank each one of the participants for the wonderful uh, support and the interest in uh, Mahindra EPC and for the very valuable questions. Uh, and I hope they were satisfied with answers. And I look forward to connecting again uh, in our next call uh, after H1 results. And let's see how the industry goes. If the industry goes well. I'm sure we'll have some good news to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Mahindra EPC Irrigation Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.